In the previous lesson, you saw how color settings can influence your working environment in Photoshop. In this movie, we'll take a look at how you might interact with the profiles for your various devices and see what choices are reasonable for different workflows. We'll take a look at swapping a profile that's embedded in a file and also respond to the messages that pop up when you open files. These messages usually warn you that a file is missing a profile altogether or that it's saved with one that's a mismatch to what Photoshop is expecting. Here we have an image that has something going on with it. I can tell by looking at a clue about its profile status that stays on at all times. If you look closely at the title bar, you'll see that right next to its current layer, it shows the color mode and the bits per pixel. Next to it is an asterisk. The asterisk indicates that Photoshop is warning you of a case of mismatched profiles. So what exactly is it trying to flag for us? Let's see. If I type Command-Shift-K or Control-Shift-K on PCs, I can access my color settings to verify what my working spaces are presently set to. It says that my preferred workflow has the RGB workflow, or the working space, set to Adobe RGB. Now let's see what the embedded profile describes. If you recall, we had set up our info palette to display the document's profile, and here it is. It's set to sRGB. As you probably know, that's a subset of the colors that are available in the Adobe RGB color space. So you basically have two options before you. One is to do nothing, ignore the mismatch. You'll want to make this choice if this particular image is going to be viewed on screen as a PDF file, or emailed, or perhaps even posted to a website. Another reason to keep this profile is if it came to you from a client or from your archives, and you will not be editing it in any way to improve its colors. In all of these cases, you don't need to do anything to this file as far as changing its profile from sRGB to another. That's because although sRGB is a much smaller color space than one that's typically used for color printing, it's still a gray balanced working space that's perfectly used for describing the colors in a limited gamut such as for viewing on the web. But let's say that you now need to make some significant color corrections to it, more than just setting highlights and shadows and adjusting the contrast that's when you'd want to convert this profile to a different and larger color space than its native sRGB. To do this, choose Edit, Convert to Profile. Choose the destination or the target color space carefully because it defines the number of colors that will be available to you for editing your images. The ideal choice is one that is device independent, so it cannot be your scanner's profile or your monitor's profile. At the same time, it needs to be large enough to represent the colors in all of the devices that you'll use in your workflow subsequently. So if you'll print these colors to an inkjet, you might choose the Adobe RGB space. Or let's say you'll be printing to an offset press, and you're interested in managing the colors more carefully, I'd suggest choosing Color Match in this case because it's smaller in size than Adobe RGB and tracks the colors available in four color printing more accurately. The next choices have to do with how you want to render very bright and saturated colors that might lie outside your printer's gamut or range of colors. That's the intent you specify. In general, for photographic images, you might use perceptual as a default because it does a fine job with preserving smooth gradations and tonal graduations. But feel free to experiment by choosing one of the others and by making sure that the preview checkbox is checked. The only other option to check is use black point compensation because this extends the dynamic range of the image when you convert from one color space to another and click OK. You'll notice now that the info palette reflects the new color space and that you no longer see the asterisk in the title bar because now it's in the same space as the default working space for the color mode. The color appearance hasn't changed much because we converted to this new color space. 
So Photoshop has worked hard to preserve the color appearance of the image as it changed the numbers from one space to another.